Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. Uh, thank you so much for being on our monthly uh, team building boot camp. So um, the reason that we came up with this class is, or with this session is simply because there's a very, very big opportunity to be able to continue to practice real estate and at the same time, um, utilize this additional vehicle that uh, EXP gives us to be able to create wealth. I mean, anytime you're with a company or anytime you're you're involved in a certain aspect, um, for example, real estate, you know, the things that we look at in real estate are, okay, we can do real estate listings, buyers, we can work with sellers. Those are different uh, markets that we can work with. We can also look at investing for ourselves. We can look at uh, purchasing properties, purchasing units. We can look at purchasing commercial real estate. Um, we can look at uh, property rentals for uh, Airbnbs. So these are the different wealth vehicles inside of the real estate industry. And up until recently, you know, this discovery of EXP and the wealth vehicle of um, it added two additional wealth vehicles, one being uh, stock, stock ownership, first company to actually gives stock ownership um, to its agents. And so we're all partners. And then the second part of that is where you're tied to the growth of the company through um, the growth that you contribute. And so it's um, what they used to call compensation for contribution. And so you can now uh, sell real estate, invest in real estate, do Airbnbs, commercial real estate, all those things, which can also add the stock um, opportunity. And you can also add the team building opportunity as additional wealth vehicles. So we're here to support you, support you with that. Of course, we have the incredible, the awesome uh, master of communication uh, and transformation. Um, Ms. Casey Council, who helps lead this conversation, and she's amazing. She's awesome. Make sure that you guys have your pen and paper handy because she drops knowledge bombs throughout um, the entire session. So, without further ado, drum roll, please. Ms. Casey Council, my sponsor. <laughs> ah, don't forget the G-Haw part. <laughs> <laughs> It's hyphenated, it's hyphenated. I know it takes some getting used to. All right, well, welcome everyone to today's call. Um, so how we run these calls, uh, this is very interesting. I heard somebody in our organization, actually a leader in our organization that was on the phone with my husband uh, recently, and uh, he was looking for some support and he goes, well, are you plugging into the monthly builders call on Tuesdays? And he goes, no, I find those conversations are kind of remedial. And I thought to myself, that's really interesting feedback since the uh, agenda for our conversations gets built off of what each of you put in the chat and bring to the conversation. And so the reason why I'm starting that off this way is that, you know, a lot of times in life, things are designed that, you know, it's like show up and, you know, Casey's going to do me or Rosie's going to do me. And when I leave this call, I'm just going to be a magical builder. <laughs> And that's not how it happens at all. Uh, how, it's, how the value gets created is what you come to the call wanting to, um, wanting to know, wanting to learn more about, or things that you're actually dealing with as you're growing and building right now. And those are the conversations that are the most valuable because those are the things that are happening in real time that are going to help be a catalyst to get you to the next stage of your own growth. And so in the absence of participating in those conversations, uh, you know, the likelihood is you'll do what you've been doing and until you in, engage in a different way or in a different level. So uh, as we start this call, what I'd really like each one of you to think about is what's the one thing that you want to walk away from today's call with uh, more clarity on or something that you might be um, experiencing a challenge around that you'd like to break through, or maybe you're just, you know, stuck somewhere. Maybe you have a uh, stinking thinking and you need a little brainwashing to clean up those cells. It could be anything because at any given moment in time, uh, we find ourselves in different, in different places. So today uh, from our call last month, we committed to start this call today for those that were on the call last month. Uh, we talked about running an experiment and how running or running multiple experiments and seeing what happened uh, in those. And I know that uh, one person in particular, uh, 
one person in particular had posted into the group like within 48 hours of the last call about an experiment that she'd run, Carolyn Howard actually. And she was blown away and excited by the outcome that it created. She did something different. She got a different result. And so this last 30 days was really about, you know, what are things that I'm going to do? Sometimes we get attached to there being a formula for things. And then we do the formula and we're so hung up on the formula. Uh, we don't, we're not ourselves and we don't bring ourselves to the conversation. And so the last month was really encouraging you to be you, engage with people, have conversations that you might not be having, do things in a different way than you might be doing or used to doing or inclined to doing and see what happens and come back and share what you learned. So I'd like to uh, open up the call today. We'll start off with that. And then as you have your agenda items that you'd like to put in the chat of what you'd like to walk away with from today's call, we'll work through those in a conversation with the remainder of our time. So you'll know it's your turn because you've taken yourself off mute and are sharing uh, what the experiment or experiments were that you ran and what the outcomes were and then what you learned in the process. I guess I'll go first. Um, so I, my experiment that I ran as I went out, actually I only got to do it one day, was to actually go out and prospect agents at open houses. Um, the first couple of open houses I did it was like I was asking a girl to prom because I was horrible at it and I didn't understand why. And I'm kind of like driving around, like, what the hell's the matter with me? And then I finally just decided, you know, like, stop going into there with a like predetermined outcome. So I just went in and just kind of just chatted and was just being myself. As, and I found out that the agents were really willing to talk about kind of the struggles that they were having. Um, so that was, you know, and then once I kind of did that, it was actually my last open house because it was four o'clock. No, no one else was open, but I did get a contact and we have been in conversation. So I think that was good at just going in. So definitely now I'm going to set it up where I'm going to go. Um, the other weekends I was doing my own open houses and there was no agents in my open houses or buyers. Um, so I better get in the car and do something different. I love that, Ralph. You know, what it reminds me of is um, I hear Rick often when he's speaking to newer agents and if, you know, they have a buyer's appointment they're going on or a listing appointment they're going on and he'll say, you know, what's your objective of this appointment? And they're like, well, to take the listing or to get the buyer in contract. And he'll say, no, that is not your objective. Your objective is to create a relationship with them where they use you for life. And that uh, what you just shared is is what reminded me of that i love it all right who else who would like to share i'll go next um what i shared is my challenge last week with lack of leverage which was my own doing i need to trust others more so i've been assigning more to others and learning to trust others more as a leverage as i uh, leverage people in my organization and my own team which has really been a huge relief and um, I'm also starting the process of hiring an, an empowered champion to assist me and put systems into place with the help of Selena, who's our amazing leverage expert and whose love language is systems, which I've never had any of. So I'm so grateful to you and Rick for bringing her into our group. Um, I'm finding as the market shifts resulting in my number of active listings increasing weekly and going from the past two years where homes sold within a week to this new market where my listings are piling up with no offers and this has never happened to me since, since the crash. So the systems, putting those into place and the templates and all of that is just, I know that that's gonna be critical for my sanity. So again, I'm so grateful to you and Rick and to Selena. And another really quick one that I've been doing is talking to not just agents about EXP, but anyone that I hear in what they're talking about that they want to improve their life or their income. And a quick example of that was I went to a listing meeting and she was talking about moving out of state. I can tell they don't want to move out of state. Um, they love where they live. They have two extra units on their property. They're not renting. She talked, she said, oh, I was originally going to get my real estate license, but then I didn't, and we really need to downsize, and so we're going to move to this 
other state. And so, you know, will you sell my house? And I said, well, I think a better idea would be for you to rent your units so you can stay here, get, get your, you know, financial feet on the ground and then join my real estate team and stay where you want to be rather, you know, so I've been using conversations with people that want to improve their life. It's, I'm finding it's a much easier path than going to agents that have been with the company for 30 years. I know there's some people who are amazing at converting those people like you, Rick and Casey, but that's not my um, forte yet. <laughs> I love it. Great, who else? I'll go. I, uh, I started doing like LinkedIn messaging. Uh, before I was in real estate, I was a teacher. So I got like a free trial of Sales Navigator last week and I've had really good success just reaching out to former teachers and kind of DM them with my story a little bit. Um, and I filter like agents who aren't at EXP. And um, I also have like email tracking on my emails I send out. And I noticed that a lot of Berkshire Hathaway agents always click my link to see what's going on with EXP. So I targeted teachers who work at Berkshire Hathaway and I got like five meetings set up. I don't know what I'm gonna say yet, but I got five meetings set up this week uh, for attraction. That's amazing. I love it. Thinking outside of the box. Um, so since no one's chiming in, I'm going to chime in really quickly, guys, because I think one of the things that, you know, everybody's trying new things, which is I love that. Mike, that's incredible. Like, you know, afterwards, message me so we can coordinate um, so I can support you with that. Um, Casey, I think one of the things that would be very helpful um, if you're open to this is um, what if we just between you and I go back and forth a little bit and open up introductions? Like, how do you approach people? I think that's one of the things that people sometimes, you know, struggle with. I don't know. Raise your hand if that's something that you you think would be helpful. Yes. Like, how do I how do I say hello? How do I like open up the conversation? Okay. So I'd like to just do a few different versions of that um, with you, Casey. What that looks like in, in my mind um, would be um, where I ask the question, you give me the objections, like how to how to open it up, how to open it up. I might mess up a few times, please correct me, you know, with whatever you do, I'll give you feedback, but let's just go back and forth and help people make that first opening. Is that okay with you, Casey? Yes, and we have some agenda items as well. So I want to make sure that we leave time for those. Okay, so we'll just spend like maybe five minutes, you know, or something like that. Cool. You know? Okay. All right. So here goes, just real rapid fire type style. Um, I'm going to approach um, this first approach for everybody. If you want to write it in your notes, it's going to be how do you approach uh, a friend, right? Somebody you know that's in real estate, somebody you have coffee with or whatnot. And you want to make that first, uh, you, want, you want to say something to them. You want to invite them, but how do I get started? So um, Casey, I'm going to practice with you. I'm going to be vulnerable and I'm just going to say, okay, let's, let's try something. And then Casey will give me feedback. She'll give me coaching, live coaching. Cool? Cool. All right. So Casey's a friend of mine. She's in my office and I just recently left. And I really love working with Casey and I would love to have her as you know, part of my team, I, I want her in my world. And so here's one approach. Um, okay, so I'm gonna call you, Casey, and you're gonna answer, we're gonna role play. Ring, ring. Rosie Rodriguez, what's up? Hey, Casey, how are you, girlfriend? I am on the bright side side of spectacular. How are you? <laughs> you know, that's what I love about you. You're always so positive and I miss you like incredibly. Hey, um, I uh, I know we haven't seen each other in a while since I kind of you know moved over, and um, I'd love to just kind of reconnect with you and maybe have lunch. Are you open to that? Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Um, how does Tuesday look for you, or is Thursday better? Thursday is better. Okay, Thursday noon at same spot. Same spot. Okay, it's cool. And how, and how are things going for you? How how's everything? Things are good. Yeah. Busy, busy, good. You know me. I never let the grass grow under my feet. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Hang up. Boop. All right. So first step, 
And I didn't go into a lot of scripting, right? This is just like the call. And I think one of the reasons I went there is because one of the first things that you want to do with a friend is you want to be able to reconnect with them, period. And if you can get in front of them, that's where you can have a long conversation and you can kind of open up the dialogue. That's my approach. That's my thinking. Casey, what would you say to me that I could have done differently or that would be a, you know, a different approach? Uh, so I love the, I love the approach about reconnecting with people. Um, there was one thing that if I didn't know that you were calling about EXP uh, or you were calling about lunch, it felt when you said, since I moved over, um, which had me be like, moved over, moved over where? So that was um, like, if it's a catch up with a friend and keep it to a catch up with a friend and yeah, let's have lunch. Okay. Got it. All right. That was very helpful. Um, I think in this case, I was thinking about somebody that I worked in the same office with, but I get your point where you're saying if it's about catching up, it's just about catching up, right? So let's just keep it about catching up. So we're going to take it a step further if it's okay with you guys. So hold on. Hold on. Let's talk about that lunch. <laughs> That's where I want to go. That's where I want to go. I want to go to lunch now, right? Okay. But before we go to lunch, I want to drill in the importance of of what we do here. Um, we're not a typical brokerage where we're just like, hey, come over because we have this you know, great technology or this and that. Um, the way that I have seen this company you know, grow or individuals grow is really through relationships. And that's a different call. You know, If you're calling someone saying, hey, I really wanna show you the marketing material and the training that the company has, and I really want you to come over and join my team, that's like your typical, what I've seen typical real estate recruiting or just recruiting in general. This is really about connecting with the people that you want in your life, that you want to be in partnership with, that you want to be in, you know, in your world. So the intention behind this first call really, 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 you know, um, one is like reconnect. What's going on with them? What's going on in the world? The door will open during lunch to be able to have, you know, more conversation. But a lot of people, a lot of times I see that people on the first call or the first connection, they're just throwing up all over them saying, you know, this is what I want. This is what I want you to know. And it's not about the other person. So that's just one point I wanted to make. Casey, do you want to elaborate on that? Yeah. So if we go to, let me just reference everyone. If you want to get your mind really clear around this piece and always anchoring people back to the tools is if you go under attraction and recruiting under the builders boot camp. Segment number three, inviting with your story, is um, separates the distinction between an invitation and a presentation. And those, uh, the principle of those two things is really important because an invitation is an invitation to a conversation. A presentation is a presentation about EXP or talking about EXP. So. Um, if it, what I would say, Rosie, is that if you invite me for lunch, the only way that it will feel like it was a genuine invite for lunch to me is if I ask you about business, not you find a way to work it in. So um, for me, that wouldn't necessarily be the most effective of my time because I want to catch up personally and I want to position a business conversation. So if I was making that invite call and the, the roles were reversed, I would say, you know, Rosie, I'd love to catch up. I don't know if you've noticed. However, I've noticed the market's really shifting. Have you noticed that? Yes. I'd love to grab lunch catch up personally because we haven't gotten together in a while and I would love to brainstorm with you what you're doing and maybe share some of the things that I'm doing strategically to go through this next shift. Would Tuesday or Thursday work better? And now in that invitation, what I've done is um, I've, I've created a space where yes, I want to catch up with Rosie personally because we're friends in the industry, but I also I'm wanting to brainstorm and mastermind and collaborate. And in that conversation, it does not become a conversation about EXP. It becomes a conversation that can naturally come up about business and strategy and future and plans. 
right? And now it is a collaborative conversation that's a more natural conversation. And in that, I'm going to stop there, Rosie. No, I, I love that. And see, what you guys are getting is a little bit like you're getting slight variations of, you know, of an approach, right? Slight variations. And they're both really, really good. And I think that um, what I love about what Casey just said is that when she's when she makes that invitation to lunch or whatnot, she is opening up that space to talk about business, right? Um, I think uh, for for me, and again, it's a little different. For me, I just want to, I just want to, I really genuinely want to catch up with that person, right? It's it's like a first date. It feels like a first date, and in that first date, um, I want to open up the door to the relationship, and um, uh, it will probably lead to business because they are probably going to talk about it because we're both in real estate. So I like that Casey said, I, you know, they, I don't want to be the one to bring it up. I'd rather have them bring it up. I want to know what's going on with them because when you get inside of other, another person's world, you really get to understand what's going on with them and people want to be heard. They want to be understood. They want to connect. And so I see the lunch as an initial conversation. I don't see it as an opportunity to really dive into the whole EXP world. It's for me, the lunch is just an initial conversation to connect and find out what's going on with them. And, um, and then we could kind of take it to the next step. Okay, so well, Rosie, I, what I wanna highlight about that is that you've recruited so many people and been a part of so many recruiting conversations that if we speak to the majority of people on this call that don't have that same you're in more of an advanced state because of how much recruiting you've done for the normal person. They're going to be so freaking excited that they got a lunch that it's going to be hard not to talk about EXP and over the conver overpower the conversation with EXP. So you have a laid back approach about it. Um, and yeah, you may go to lunch just to go to lunch, but for the person that knows if business comes up or an EXP conversation comes up, you're going to be in it. This is where having a really clean agenda comes into play. Cause if you invite me to lunch and now you're trapping me in an EXP conversation, I'm going to be pissed mm -hmm. as you talk to me about how excited and how perfectly positioned you are for the future shifting market because you're at EXP and I should consider looking at it to be there with you. I'm going to be pissed that I've taken my lunch um, under the guise of, Hey, let's catch up as friends. That's just me, right? Not everybody would respond that way, but I would definitely respond that way. And I would cut that conversation off. So it could be counterproductive, right? But if your agenda, if you have as part of your agenda that you are going to talk business, you're going to talk strategy as part of getting to know them and what's going on and catching up, um, then when that comes up in the conversation, it's not a surprise because I've already stated that that's one of the reasons for my agenda and getting together with you. Yeah, we're friends in the industry, but man, the market's shifting. I want to pick your brain on what you're doing to thrive through it. And I want to share the things that I'm doing to thrive through it so that we can become stronger and closer to together as we go through this shift. For me, that feels really clean, mm -hmm. right? And if someone called me and said that, and then in the conversation, I'm not with EXP and the conversation comes up about EX, how EXP can support that. I'm like, hmm, you know what? We said we were going to talk about this versus I know my friend Rosie's at EXP. And of course she wants to recruit me because all I see posted all over her Facebook is about EXP stuff and joining EXP and who just joined EXP. And like, so I think agenda, like having a clean, it's fine to have an agenda to talk to someone about EXP. However, if that is part of your agenda, you've got to position a part of a business conversation. And if you're only positioning, you know, hey, let's catch up as friends, uh, then it becomes awkward. It's like, well, how do I open the door? Like, where's the, like, where do I say that? Not for you, Rosie, because of how many conversations you've had, but for people that haven't gone through that process as many times as you have, it's not, it's going to be a different experience and that's normal, right? It's totally normal. The only way it becomes natural to where you're like, yeah, I want to catch up and you're catching up. And now it's in like the natural part of the conversation is when you've done it as many times as Rosie has done it to where it doesn't feel pushy. It doesn't feel awkward. And it doesn't feel like you had some hidden agenda all along. That's now just coming out at lunch. Yeah. I think one of the things, um, 
you know, just kind of leading into that, but there's a psychology, right? And I think this is one of the things I learned from, from you, Casey, where, where the first time you're talking to someone, you're really just wanting to get an understanding on, you know, on them, right? You're really wanting to, um, I think like, especially like on recruiting calls that I've been on, I, I used to start off with, yeah, okay, great, you know, like presentation, right? It was, okay, so we have this and we have this and we have that. And I really didn't have a listening or I would, my ear wasn't plugged into what was going on with them and their business. It was more about what I wanted to present. And so I failed and failed and failed and failed. And then I said, okay, well, let me circle back here. Let me circle back here. And why don't I start by understanding what's going on with the other person? Why don't I start by asking better questions, right? And then once I started asking better questions, um and started listening then i was able to like casey said like really position the conversation around what was important to them so the reason i say that is because um, um the intention whenever i get on a call on a first call or i reconnect with someone my intention is really i want to know what's going on with them i do not want to present i do not want to throw in hey by the way ESC. I really want to understand what's going on with them. And I have found that that's been very rewarding, you know, personally. Then at the end of the conversation, I can say, hey, you know what? I'd love to tell you what's going on. If you're open to it, we could set up another call and just really talk about, you know, blah, 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 blah. That's that's been that's felt natural to me. Um, uh, <coughs> the, the opposite would be or the opposite, but a different approach, not opposite, would be great. I want to talk about this and I want to talk about business because when I go there, then like my business side takes over and I just want to go talk about business. So it feels it feels more sharky as opposed to like relationship, but that's just me, right? I, if, I, if I want to catch up with someone about business, I'm calling to recruit you. If I want to catch up with someone about you, it's about you. And so, I don't know, there's like a subtle feeling for me on both sides and, you know, it's, it's just a personal, and this is why we're doing it live, guys. You guys like that we're doing this live? We're just like, bam, and bam, and bam, and bam. Okay, good, good, because there's no right way. There's just different ways, right? Um, I'm going to hand it back over to Casey because we did one example. I know there's an agenda item, so I want to make sure that we don't hog it. Um, do we have time for another, Casey, or do you want to go into the next part? Uh, let's knock out the agenda items, and then we'll come back to this. Does that work? Okay. Sounds yep, good. we'll go round two on it. Um, so, and this is part of it, Sherry's agenda item what is a strategy for approaching agents with a skill up and focus forward that will build into recruiting conversations. Um, Sherry, will you come off mute and tell me a little bit more about that? Um, yeah, I typed that before you had the conversation where you answered 99% of what I was asking in that whole thing. So um, actually your role play covered a lot of that. The only, I guess, um question i have or um it feels like this shift if you will i i was in the last shift for i started at the last shift in 2003 and i'm trying to figure out is this faster than last time and are we more aware this time um as far as the shift goes to open that conversation to um have with other agents to be able to say, you know what, I was in the last one and it was kind of slow. This one's very fast and you're going to have to skill up and move quickly. And I would love to be able to find out from you, from the agent, what they're doing to get ready for this. And that being the, the, the reason for the get together and then to be able to speckle in the EXP and, and move it forward from there, whether it's asking their opinion like we did you know we talked about that last time you know um asking for an opinion instead of can i present to you can i get an opinion has been a, a great tool so i'm that's basically where i was going and i'm i'm just putting my feet on the ground after being out for a month and a half and so i'm setting up some dates and reaching out to agents right now and so i'm just looking for good conversation yeah, so I will share with you like so this would be a third this is called a third party story that you could share which is someone else's story. And it's actually with uh, within Rick's real estate team right so his sales team so he has. Um, he has nine buyers agents 
um, and he's the lead, you know, lead listing special rainmaker, lead listing specialist that so we have support with that now. Um, but his strategy up until, oh, 20 days ago um, was get a listing on the market and 10 days later be taking offers, have an offer date. And they were moving listings into escrow within two weeks from the date that that listing hit the market and running anywhere from four to six listings um, that that would, you know, that was the cycle, like a four to six listing load, right? And as of the last um, 30 days, he has 10 listings, none of which have gone into contract on that strategy that are all actively on the market in the last 30 days. So a conversation could be, you know, hey, I was talking with a friend of mine who's like seasoned, seasoned like veteran in the industry. This was a strategy he was working up with up until a month ago. And now he's got 10 listings that none of them have gone into contract on that strategy and are still on the market. What are you seeing? And that's a that's a great way to jump into the MLS and look and see who has active listings that are more than 10 days old. I mean, that's just the the opening conversation to have with them. That's brilliant. Yeah. And so, I mean, if this comes into the call that we had last month about how you position yourself and the story that you have written. So the market is in a shift and what is going to be your identity in the shifting market? Are you going to be someone who doubles, triples, quadruples your reach as an agent and market share? Uh, are you going to be someone that's holding on by the skin of your teeth? Like, what is the story? What is the identity that you have created for yourself already going through this shift? And Sherry, for you, because I know that you uh, are more lit up about coaching and recruiting into the industry than you are on the production side is you have the opportunity to put your stake in the ground right now and be the person that is, hey, I am the true north for people that are going to thrive during this shift. I like that true north part. Yeah, and, yeah. and so I'm reaching out and I wanna know, you know, what are, what's your, what are you experiencing? What are you seeing? And that's going to position you as a resource, number one, if that becomes, I was just throwing that out there, right? Mm -hmm. um, based on what I know of you. However, that's going to position you for all conversations and all interactions that you would have moving forward without having to think about it, right? Absolutely. I, yeah, you've, I'm kind of on overload of how many notes I've taken in just a couple of minutes. So you guys have hit it really well today and I appreciate it. Cool, cool. Are we complete on that or was there more? Um, no, we're complete on that. That was where I was going. I mean, you answered most of it in your role play. Okay, cool. So thank you. Thank you for um, putting an agenda item on there. I love that. Uh, Bree Godfrey, I think there's a few questions or comments. You were just highlighting that. Bree Schneiders, can you role play a co-op agent third time's a charm, LOL. Tell me about that, Bruce. Um, my, I, I want to start getting into my co-op agents and getting them over to EXP. And I just want to know, you know, I'm sending thank you cards and everything like that after doing the, the business with them. But I want to broach the subject and I know it's it's how's your business or how's how's things going and other phrases like uh, are you open-minded or how open are you I, I just like to hear a role play between you two if if you guys were co-op agents on a, a deal well I'm happy to do that because it's one of my favorite ones um will you be the agent on the other side Bruce sure because it's different for you listening to it if I do it with Rosie versus mm -hmm. you feeling what it would feel like to receive that call Absolutely. And then you can give me feedback. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm not giving you feedback at that. all. You did I'm absolutely all, awesome. <laughs> I'm, uh, no, I'm always looking to get better, right? So I like to be challenged. Okay. And I want somebody to call me out on stuff and be like, sure. hey, this was, you know, clean up your stuff here, Council. Council Jihaw, whoever you are. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. Um, 
Bruce, what is the uh, what is the address of the of somebody that you just closed a deal with? Uh, 27, uh, 2817, um, 2817. The address? What do you mean? The the, the home? Yeah, right? of an, the agent okay. that you were just most recently in contract with that you would want to approach. Twenty eight seventeen Forest Mist, a uh, falling mist is the address. Okay. Um, and then just their first name. Jesse. So 2817 Falling Mist is the property address, correct? Okay. So um, I'm going to be you, Bruce, okay? Okay. So yeah, ring, ring. Hello. Is this, is this Bruce? This is Bruce. Long time no talk. Jesse, how's it going? It's going well, ma'am. <laughs> good, or good. Miss, yeah. Hey, um, I only have a quick minute because I'm about to jump into a meeting, but uh, there's a question that I had for you. Do you have a second to talk right now? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Cool, cool. Well, first off, I wanted to say that um, my experience in working together with you to get 2817 Fallen Mist closed was top notch. And what I really loved yeah. about working with you is that you were proactive in your communication. You did what you said you were going to do. And I would do another deal with you or look forward to doing another deal with you like any day of the week. Oh, man. Okay. Thanks. I appreciate it. Yeah, I, I feel the same about you, man. You did very well. Thank you so much. So, you know, my experience of working with you through that transaction is that you're an absolute professional. And my guess is that you're committed to staying at the leading edge of what's happening in the industry and where it's going as we go through this shift. Is that correct? Or did I get that wrong? Uh, well, I, I, I'd, I'd like to think so. Yeah, I think I, I think I'd like to be on the front edge, or like you said, or the bleeding edge of technology and everything like that. Uh, but yeah, we do all right where we are. Yeah, absolutely. Cool, cool. Well, there's some things that I've learned about recently that are game changers for agents in our industry. And as I've learned about these, what I've realized is that um, every agent that is a professional in the industry that's going to stay in the industry is going to be impacted regardless of whether they're taking advantage of what's available or not. Would it make sense to, uh, to get you some details on what those are in the context of education and staying at the leading edge of being educated in our industry? Absolutely. Absolutely. I'd rather see what's coming and know what's coming than get, uh, blindsided. Cool. Cool. Well, Bruce, um, or Jesse rather, you know me, I am focused on being a real estate professional and the transactional side of the business and helping buyers and sellers and thriving and growing in that way. However, uh, one of my business partners is somebody that I respect and admire so much, and they have committed the majority of their time and resources to educating other agents on what these things are and really being an ally for people that are learning based and wanting to grow through this next shift. So would it make sense for me to connect you via text with them. And then uh, you guys can carve out some time and, and get those details for you. Uh, who is this guy or lady? Oh, well, let me tell you about Rick. Rick has been in the industry for 42 years, still actively selling. He's done everything from own brokerages to coach top level teams around the country and speak, coach and train to real estate agents all over the US and Canada. Oh. And uh, for me, he's one of the most respected people that I know that exists in the industry. So I know that you'll probably, I mean, he's really busy. Um, however, I'm pretty sure that I can get him to carve out a 30 minute mm -hmm. window for you and that he would be willing to do that based on my experience of working with you and what I'll share with him so that he makes sure to set up that appointment with you. Oh. Yeah. Hey, yeah. It sounds like a, like something I shouldn't miss out on. Cool. Cool. All right. Well, I will uh, connect you guys once we hang up and then I'll look forward to doing another transaction with you sooner than later. Okay. All right. Nice hearing from you. All right. Okay. I so I know I'm kind of wordy, right? And you're never going to use the same words as me. So let's break down the structure of what I did in that conversation because anybody can replicate a structure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. So before we break down the, stru the structure, Bruce, I want you to tell me what was your experience of being on the other end of that conversation and anybody else that has feedback on that conversation, put it in the chat. There's no bad feedback. Just bring it all. 
Well, how I felt on the end of the conversation was is kind of weird because I know his and my relationship, and then you're trying to be me in that same relationship. So yeah. it was a little weird trying to step outside of the relationship and and but still stay inside the relationship at the same time, if you know what I mean. Oh, but yeah. I, I felt I felt comfortable in how you were coming across uh, in a very uh, genuine manner, uh, if that's the if that that's a good word, I guess. Um, it was very genuine. It wasn't pushy. And you basically glorified me in the same at the same time, saying that I was so professional. You you basically knocked down all my walls, if there were any to begin with. So I, I like that. There was a lot of compliments from you coming out of you to get me to listen and open up a little bit more. Made it a very easy conversation to slide into, in my opinion. Cool. And what was not effective? Um nothing i was surprised in the direction you went where you edified the person that you were going to to introduce me to um i wasn't expecting that in the slightest uh which makes me think that that's what i might want to do um or should do but there was nothing that wasn't effective in in the in the gist of the conversation in the in, in the conversation itself um sorry i can't tear you down because I couldn't see anything to tear you down about but uh yeah I thought it was I thought it was like I said I wasn't expecting that direction but when when I the one thing that I saw is that you were giving me I thought we were going to meet that's where I thought we were going but you edified somebody else for me to meet with them and then that's why I said well who is this person and then you edified him and made him extremely important, extremely busy, extremely successful. And then you gave me a half hour. So that's where I was like, mm, maybe I want that half hour, you know, whoever this person is. So that's where I went with that. Cool. So um, I love the comments that we're getting over here on the side. And there's two ways that you can do it. You can do it in a handoff which is for people that don't want to recruit. So this is for those of you like, I don't like recruiting. I'm uncomfortable recruiting. I don't know what to say. Or you have people in your organizations that want to take advantage of revenue share, but they don't like recruiting and they don't want to be in that conversation. The conversation that I just had with you, Bruce, is the handoff and how you do the handoff. I like if it. I was not doing a handoff and I did it that way on purpose, because um, everybody can hand someone off. And I know based on the number of three-way calls that Rick does and that I do for people in our organization, people are not utilizing third-party validation. And it's the most strong, effective tool that you have, period, bar none, right? It is of anything, if you wanted to be a recruiting ninja and the one thing that you mastered was getting people on third-party validation calls, you will build a, an army because it's not dependent on your skills. It's not dependent on anything. It's just you being able to get your prospect in front of someone who you know can take them through the process and close them if they're open, right? And actually open them if they're open, not close them. So like the third, the handoff is, is, critical to have duplicating in your organizations. And if you think about the fact that if you have an organization of a hundred people, that means 10 to 12 of them are going to be builders on some level. So what are you doing with the other 90, 88 to 90? It's a missed opportunity if they do not know how to do that handoff. totally missed opportunity because for the people that are builders, if they've got that duplicating in their organization, they're going to be on two, three, four, five, six calls a day and growing at massive rates of speed. So that's why I did the handoff first. If it was, if I was not doing a handoff, it would be, um, it would be Bruce, let's get together and have coffee or Jesse, let's get together and grab coffee. Right. And in that 30 minutes, it would be not about EXP. It would be 100% about everything about your business, about what's going on with you. It's what we call a fact find, where I am getting all of the due diligence on you about where you're actually at. And based on what I learn about you in those 30 minutes of us having coffee, 
I would position an invitation to actually sit down and look at how the model could help you fill those gaps. I, me personally, I would be more suspicious of the let's have coffee. I, I actually loved the handoff because okay. I could see that happening. And then all of a sudden I get this genius on the other end who's doing his or her best job to get him or whoever I sent to them yep. into our good graces. Like you said, I, I would rather pass the buck to someone who is a pro at doing what they're doing in the soft sell way and yep. leaving it in their hands. Yeah. So one important thing is that it's not 100 percent handoff. And let me uh, back up a little bit on that. No, I get uh, it. For, for that initial call, you would be on that initial call to make the introduction. Right. Yeah. As a three way. Person, right. Yeah. So let's find a way, you know, and I'll make the introduction to you to this person. And that's really the door opener. So in, a, in, in this approach, it's very similar to Rosie's approach of getting together and, you know, catching up, right? That second call would be the fact find about that person and what's going on with them and where they're at in their business. So whether you choose to work together and immediately work that into a third party, you know, context or you choose to have the first conversation by yourself and say, Hey, let's, you know, let's look at how, based on everything that you shared, um, I believe you'll find ways that this model could support you in filling some of those gaps or taking what you're doing to even the next level. Are you open to going through that and looking at it yourself um, so that you can decide that for yourself? That's not for me to decide for you. And if they say yes, then the next piece is you're on the model explained with them to go through that information and have a dialogue about it at the end. So the when you go through the third party validation training or you go through those six videos on the boot camp, when um, let me just go back and share the screen, what you're gonna see is that in that conversation, um, and here's where you'll find those, in that conversation, I'm running a process and the process is clear the time which is what I did at the beginning. I said, hey, I've only got a couple of minutes because I'm running into an appointment. Do you have an appointment right now? And this is really key when you're doing an invitation call that you keep it to a short conversation because otherwise you'll find yourself in presenting mode. So by stating right up front, when I clear the time that I only have a couple of minutes and check in to see if you do, I'm not trapping you on a 30 or 40 or 60 minute call in that moment, even if you have time to talk. And what that does is that creates an energy of, it creates a pull energy of people coming towards you versus a push energy of you going towards them. Once I cleared the time, I paid you a compliment, which is the second part of the process. And it was, it was what was true for me based on my experience with you. And because you're a co-op agent, I went on my most recent experience of you in that transaction. But then I used that to position the question that I had for you, which is why I was calling which was stating my experience of you being a professional and wanting to stay ahead of what's going on in the industry. And did I get that right or not? That was part of the compliment to then position the question and state that there's things that are available that have not been, whether you're using them or taking advantage of them in your business or not, you will be affected as we go through this shift because it oh. makes sense to get educated on what those are. Again, not recruited, educated. Mm -hmm. And so that was the invitation. The invitation was about the education. And then the last piece is the getting the, the, the appointment set up. So that framework of, of doing those things would be when you come to the next conversation, it's the exact same thing. If we're getting together, you know, for 30 minutes on a Zoom, in an introduction to whoever's doing that third party validation call, I'm going to, you know, edify Jesse and um, and introduce him. I'm going to edify the person doing the three-way call and introduce them. I'm going to give, you know, like, here's what brings us to this call today. And then that conversation is going to now be about Jesse, how long he's been in the industry, what's working really well for him, like what's he noticing and experiencing in the market. And then using that conversation to build and solidify the relationships as a launching pad to, does it make sense to actually look at a platform and program where we see based on what you've shared some huge ways that you stand to benefit based on where you're at and where you want to go right and it doesn't mm -hmm. it's not like i like to keep it high level 
huge ways you can benefit based on where you're at and where you want to go versus, oh, yes, and you can have revenue share that's going to give you some passive income. And then you could, when you're closing your next transaction, you can get stock. I'm not going, that's presenting to Jesse, right. I'm not presenting to Jesse. I'm building the relationship. I'm doing the due diligence on him and I'm using that to position another invitation, which is to let's put the pieces together. We see where there's, those pieces can go together. Let's see what you see, right? Mm -hmm. So it's a very kind of fluid, again, no right or wrong way to say the words. However, there's a flow to it that is a, that is a structure that holds the conversation, right? And every conversation, if you choose to integrate it, where at the end, it's like, wow, that felt really professional. That felt really good. Yeah, I want to engage with you more because what it felt like in those experiences, you handle the sincerity piece where there's all of the feelings that people are going to have as they go through that experience and the competency piece where there's a high level of competence and you're actually walking them through a process that they don't realize you're walking them through, even though you are. And that's where the, the beauty of like having those things in place um, comes in. Again, if you want the video tutorial trainings on all of this, it's on Empire Builders Pro in the six series on the boot camp and the third party validation call. Rosie, anything you'd add? You know, Casey, the only thing is that because obviously, you know, um, you've been doing this for such a long time, you know, and, and I've been doing it for a little while too. I think would be helpful um, the structure, the framework that you just said. Could you type that clearly in? Sorry about that. We got a duck in the house. Can we? Uh, can you type that in the comments? Just one, two, three, four, five. I think a couple of us um, typed something in the comments, but the first part would be the. So the first step one is yeah, clear the time. Clear the time. Yep. Step number two is a compliment which is also edification. Then step number three is the actual invitation. Step number four is confirm the appointment. Let me let me ask a question because one of the things that you that I saw that to place, but I'm not sure where it would fall in. So you cleared the time. Hey, do you have a minute? Yes, great. Okay, hey, I worked with you. It was so awesome. You're great. Um, and then from moving from there to invitation, it feels like there's a step there about, um, um, or how, I guess the, okay, compliment, blah, blah, blah. Would you be interested in boom, 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 boom? or with the market changing, like kind of framing the introduction invitation. Maybe that's what I'm missing in my brain. Does that make sense? i say that one more time because I was typing this stuff out. <laughs> okay. Um, give me one second. Okay, I, you um, it. You I like it. to think that I can multitask. However, uh, that little, I think it's like a 15 page book called Multitasking is a Lie. Um, that we did in a team building thing once years ago, where we all went through these exercises that were multitasking and everybody flunked um, because it's impossible to multitask. So I was hearing you in the background looking for clarification on something. However, I'm not clear on what you're looking for clarification on. <laughs> I, I didn't hear what you said because I was reading. So did you say something about multitasking? <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and finish because you're doing what I was what I was asking. So finish. Okay. okay well, anyway. Yeah. Okay. Um, Ro Rosie, what I got from that was uh, the invitation was to education. Yep. Right. So, <clears throat> so she was inviting to an education um, opportunity uh, with Rick, which um, which you know uh, led into the invitation, the invitation of education, and uh, and then setting up a, a third party call um, that via whether it's text. I think she said she was going to text, um, uh, or maybe that was a, you know, no, she, said, creative, she said text. She's going to do introduction through a text. Yeah. She hooked yeah, us so up. She was hooking us up on a text. To, so I like what she Exactly. Let, so Letitia, the invitation. Yeah, Letitia made a comment here where she said, I assume you are someone who is ahead of, of key things happening in the real estate market. And that was the bridge. Um, yeah. 
So all of us are not, um, you know, as experienced, right? And Casey is definitely a master of communication. And I think at some point, Casey, would be really great to kind of have this kind of scripted out so that we can actually understand well, I, I, the I, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna beg to differ on that. On what? And, 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 I think all of us are skilled real estate agents. Um, we've all done a lot of negotiating. I think all of us are just as great and we just need to step into it. And um, and I think that's very, very important. It's like the mindset of a lot of you guys are negotiating deals. You're already talking to real estate agents and you're in a flow of you know being a real estate agent and you know getting into a flow of introducing people to our company and building your business as a, say, a brokerage, um, I, I want everybody to just remember that our flow when you're doing I think us are just as good as Casey, um, no pun intended at all. Uh, I just think that all of us just need to step into that flow and step into uh, that mindset and just get really excited and you know passionate about what you do. And then it just comes naturally authentic. And when you just being yourself and you're just having fun. Um, I think that energy is just going to go a long way. And so my uh, contribution, if I could be a contribution today, is just, I just want to remind everybody to be authentic, just have fun. And, um, and that's what we're doing. And people are going to go off of that energy and they're just going to be, want, want to be around you. And all you're doing at that point is just introducing other people to uh, some education. So that way they can uh, grow and uh, keep learning. So um, that's just kind of my two cents. I think all of us, in a sense, are uh, just as good as anybody. We just need to be authentic and um, and, then, and let that. I think I think just to add to that, Damiano. Um, yes, definitely, we're all talented salespeople. However, when we got into sales, we had a lot of practicing to do, and I think a lot of us did a lot of scripting. So I think some of the verbiage and the language and the psychology around the conversation, it would be great to kind of have some scripts so that we can. You know, take that energy, take that enthusiasm, take all the things that we authentically know and have inside of us, but then also follow a little bit of a framework, you know, to the conversation. And that's kind of where I'm thinking we sh we should probably have a little documentation, Casey. Um, yeah, I, could, I could be enthusiastically cra crappy. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So if I don't have the framework. Yeah. So can we have a framework, Casey? That's the question. Yes, um, I think if you want to have Megan go back and transcribe this call, that would be a great way to grab it because we have real life conversation, you know, here. I don't ever say things the same way twice. So, but I always follow the framework. I am always following the framework where I'm clearing the time to make sure I know how much time we have together. I am giving some kind of compliment that's an investment in that convert in that relationship. And then I am using that as a bridge to some kind of invitation. So the, and then I know not to, to go into presenting in a conversation. I know, don't ever let myself do it. So from Damiano's perspective, yes, everybody here, when you bring you to those conversations, that's the best thing you can possibly do. And then where the skills come into play and the practice and repetition over time is in holding it in a framework that's gonna hold a solid conversation where it's like, oh yeah, let's talk. Oh, but I didn't set an appointment to talk. Well, that's one of the steps, right? How often? Yeah, yeah, let's get together next week and there's nothing on the calendar. Well, that's one of your steps, right? And, um, and so based on, um, based on behavioral styles, some people will be confident and comfortable asking for the appointment. Other people will not. They will absolutely will not. And so that's where having that structure to come back to is key. Um, because then you can bring your personality to your personality and who you are and how you personally connect with people to those same aspects. So it's a yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. We're, we are at the top of the hour, guys. This was a this was a little bit of a different call. I think it was good. I think we got some examples and we got some structure. My takeaway, my biggest takeaway was framework. What's the framework of the conversation? Like, how are you framing things? I know Casey's really big on duplication, right? And so you guys want to be able to practice with this framework. Um, you guys can go back to the recording, of course, and then you want to be able to um, uh, just master it so that you can duplicate this with other people. Thank you, Ralph. Great call. Bruce, great stuff. Bruce, Chris, 
best call for me, says Bruce. Awesome. Thank you, guys. We will see you guys next time. And thank you for your time. Bye.